History tells us Manhattan was swindled from the Indians for 24 bucks worth of trinkets. Today, 24 bucks wouldn't get your car out of the parking garage. Yeah, Wall Street sure has grown since the time of Peter Stuyvesant. Take a modern day stock wizard named Jordan Kerr, who lived on the telephone and adrenaline. Look, of course I'm sure. The deal is set, as always. Right. Okay. Good night. Boy, hey, you make people money, they just want more. What the hell is this? Hey, wait a minute. Look, can we talk about this? <laughs> Mr. Kerr? You in there, Mr. Kerr? Sandy, come do the cleaning. Mr. Sandy, come do the cleaning, you hear? Oh, my God! What happened here, Mr. Kerr? What happened? And I, need, I need an ambulance at Jordan Karen Associates right now! While the night janitor, Andy Havens, took flight from a crime he didn't commit, I was going a couple of rounds with my demons. Some pray, some meditate. I hit. It's my own brand of psychotherapy. That's when Andy Havens stumbled into my life. just minutes after he stumbled onto a murder. Andy was out cold. Luckily, Maya was in the house. Much, much better. Just keep breathing in and out. Now take it easy. Did you call for paramedic? No, we want to keep this whole thing under wraps. That's why I really appreciate you coming over here, Maya. But he's bleeding. No, it's not his blood. I checked. How's his pulse? Well, it seems to be normal, but, Mike, what's going on here? That's what I want to find out, and you don't want to know. Okay, I don't want to know, and I have to go for massage. I didn't know you gave massage. After all this, I need to get one. Me too. I could use one myself. Maybe another time. Namaste. Thanks, man. I like your friend, Mike. Andy. There's almost $50,000 in bear bonds in there. That's as good as cash. You a rich man? I, I, know, I know all about it. How, how you helped Walt Garbo. Me and him were pals. He said, Mike Hammer's the best when a fella gets into trouble. Folks will tell you that, that, that I did this. Well, I didn't do nothing. You, you gotta believe me. Come on, listen, you gotta help me, pal. You gotta start from the beginning, all right? Uh, like I told you. Mr. Kerr, someone shot him. I brought you the evidence. I brought you the gun. You got it. You, you did. Don't let them pit this pin this on me, Mike. I swear to God, I didn't do it. I didn't do nothing. Just take it easy. It's going to be all right. Come. 
Skip, I gotta talk to you. I haven't got time for you right now. Big Wheeler dealer broker on Wall Street just went out and got himself shot. Now I'm on my way down there. I got an eyewitness. Wait a minute. Andy, come on in here. I want you to meet somebody. Skip, this is Andy Havens. Andy Havens. Yeah. Andy, cancel everything. I just caught Andy Havens. Thanks, Mike. You just made my job a whole lot easier. I owe you one. Wait a minute. Skip, he's my client. And he's innocent. You think I'd be helping him if he wasn't? Take a look at this. Mike, you just made my night. Um, wait a minute. I didn't do it. But, no, I, when I came into the room to do my cleaning, he was just lying there. Blood everywhere. You know how hard it is to get blood out of a carpet? Mandy, get in here. Don't say another word until we've given you your rights. Oh, come on, Skip. You can't book him. Look at him. He belongs in a hospital, not a holding cell. You know, I gotta book him. Read him his rights. I found Andy a lawyer and caught up with Skip at the crime scene. So you just turned your back on him and let him go. And how could he be so stupid? I know Andy. He's a friend of mine. I didn't think he was going to run away. Skip, you going to let me in? Mike, this is a police investigation. I told you to stay outside behind the tape. Hey, you also told me you owed me one when I brought Andy Havens in. Now, come on, let me in. Uh, are we clear in here? Yeah. All right, Mike, let him in. You know Andy Havens didn't do this. I mean, what motive could he possibly have? We'll find a motive. He's a confused old man. He should be retired. He's no killer. Of course Andy didn't do it. Excuse me, I, uh, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Cheryl Wenders. Oh, uh, you Jordan Kerr's secretary? I'm the late Mr. Kerr's partner. Partner? I'm impressed. So you're the sole owner now? His will stipulates that his family gets his share. I see. Uh, where was Andy when you came in? Mike, I'll handle this. I'm just trying to get a sense of geography, Skip. He is my client. Who was he? He was over there with blood all over his clothes, gun in his hand, and the body was over there. Excuse me. Step aside. We're coming through anyway. What the hell is this, Grand Central Station? You got any leads on the bastard who whacked Jordan Kerr? Who are you? Captain Gleason, I'm sorry. This is Mr. Anthony Roba. He's one of our most valued clients. What was it, robbery? Some numb nuts janitor? Hey, watch your mouth, pal. He's a client of mine. Well, who the hell are you? I'm my camera, a numb nuts private investigator. And you got bad manners, yo yo. You got something to say about Mr. Roba. Try it out on me first. I'll make a note. Hey, settle down. Look, I do a lot of trading with this firm. Kerr was important to me. This janitor's guilty. Let's clean it up and get on with business. Your business too big for a proper police investigation? Mike, I'll take care of this. Mr. Roper, let me assure you, nothing will change here at Jordan Kerr and Associates. You make sure it doesn't. I'll take my business elsewhere. You understand that? Of course. You'll receive the same careful attention as always. You have my word on it. Let's get out of here. You know, Mike, terrific people skills. Well, thank you, Skip. You've got a nice smile yourself. So do you. Cheryl Weathersby had more than a good smile. She had a motive. I left Wall Street for Lou's Bar, where I had to tend to one of my investments. What'd you say the name of this game was? I call it a hustle. Now, that's the eight ball, kid. You got to call it. It's going right in front of you. Sure, this table's level. Mike, it's been a pleasure doing business with you. Yeah. Where are you working Monday morning? Listen, tomorrow I want you to go over to Andy Haven's apartment. Take a look around, see if the place is clean. There's a janitor. How dirty can it be? Skip Gleason's gonna get a warrant. He's gonna be there at 9 o'clock, so you get out of there by then. Okay. Want a game? For money? Rack em. You want to keep breathing through that thing sticking out of the middle of your face, pal? Leave Mr. Rope alone. Or the next time you won't be playing pool, you'll be in a pool of your own blood. Let's go. Rope's boy Robert turned a friendly game of pool into a contact sport. But why? Jeez, Mike. Another broken cue? Put it on my tab. 
Why was I making Ropa nervous? That's what I had to find out. The next morning, I prayed that Nick had overslept. He hadn't. On my orders, he searched the crime scene without a warrant and was caught without a warning. What the hell's he doing here? Nick, what happened at 9 o'clock? Judge had an 8.30 tea time. What happened to your pager? The batteries are dead. I trusted you. What is he doing here? Skip, Andy gave us the key to his apartment because he wanted his toothbrush. Dental hygiene is very important to him. Dental hygiene, my ass. Please, I just had breakfast. Listen, Captain, I just got here. I haven't disturbed a thing. You disturbed me. I'm telling you, Skip, this guy had nothing to hide. If he had nothing to hide, what'd you send Nick in here for, huh? Boys, search the place. I'm sorry. All right, all right. Over here. So that's why we stopped by Lionel's for coffee, hmm? To stall. You want some cream? Talk about cold, hard cash. And Ben Franklin wasn't the only picture in the fridge. The late Jordan Kerr. Stocks and bondage. Wall Street's a lot more interesting than I thought. Look at these. Looks like Jordan Kerr was caught in a compromising position. You know, this is an obvious case of blackmail. This is obviously a setup. Come on. Why would he put photographs in the refrigerator? Someone wanted you to find those, Captain. Here's a crazy old man. Crazy or not, Andy Havens is not capable of killing anybody. You know what? This is a police investigation. I want you out of here, both of you. Well, I want to know exactly how much money is there. Count it, every penny. Your boss is supporting at least three bookies that I know of. Get out of here! Go on. By the way, Maury is totally paid off. Nick bought batteries as I left the battery for Ropa's oasis of overpriced entrees, where meals and deals were the specialty of the house. May I help you? Is Mr. Anthony Ropa here? Was he expecting you? Just tell him my camera wants to see him. Please tell Mr. Ropa, uh, Mr. Mike Hammer is here to see him. Which one of these guys do you like? Are they presidents? Well, some people think so. Sorry, I had to see that. You want to buzz me in? What's the matter with you? Those men are members of this club. What club? The thug of the month? Tell me something. Why is it that you're the only one of Jordan Kerr's clients that showed up at the murder scene? Because Jordan Kerr meant a lot to me. And where were you the night he was killed? I'm a businessman. I buy and sell securities. Well, I'm not buying what you're selling. And what I want to know is how you knew Jordan Kerr was killed. The cops called Cheryl Weathersby. She called me. Now, you got a problem with that? And now Cheryl Weathersby's handling your affairs, right? Yeah, what of it? No. OK, enjoy your lunch. Get him a raw steak and a bromo. Lunch was over. For dessert, Cheryl Weathersby. Excuse me, uh, there was nobody at the front desk, so I took the liberty of inviting myself in. Mike Hammer, Charles Wald. Mr. Hammer's a private investigator. He's helping out Andy. Charles here is our top bond analyst. I need to talk to you. Charles has my complete confidence. Please. Sit down, gentlemen. Thanks. Jordan Kerr's body's hardly cold, and you've already taken over his offices. Who else was on the premises the night that Jordan Kerr was killed? At that hour, as far as I know, security and the custodial staff. Jordan Kerr was killed around 11 p.m. How long before that did you leave the premises? About an hour. I had some work I needed to finish up, so I rooted it through my computer at home. How about you, Chaz? I left shortly after six. Oh, where'd you go? Business. Personal business. 
You have somebody who can verify your alibi? Am I some sort of suspect? Surely I don't need to account for my whereabouts to the likes of you. How would you like to verify your whereabouts to a grand jury? Give us a minute, will you, Charles? Cheryl Weathersby was my early nominee for Killer of the Year, but the field was now crowded. Anthony Roper was number one with a bullet, and Charles Walder was definitely in the running. Cheryl and I talked, and the hour grew late. I picked up the subtle, sensual signs that she was interested in more than conversation. I had to admit her obvious charms, but there's nothing charming about murder. I had to be sure that Cheryl was in the clear. I wasn't expecting water. Try it. It's good for you. Do you have an alibi? You mean I'm a suspect? Uh, Andy Havens is my client. I don't believe he killed Jordan Kerr. But the best way I can prove that, the only way I can prove that, is to find out who did. So I apologize if I offended you. No, I suppose you're right. You have to suspect everyone. I was working on a complicated deal for the Indonesian exchange last night. I had some figures that I needed at home. I've given my computer logs to Captain mm. Gleason for verification. Mm. You know, the cops say those bonds were fake. No, I didn't. Mm. Bearer bonds are the same as cash, counterfeits a federal crime. So is murder. It's no crime having a drink with a beautiful doll. Water might have gotten Columbus where he was going, but it was going to leave me high and dry. Jordan Kerr was the closest thing to a mentor to me. He taught me everything. He was in love with his work and his kids. I think in that order. What about you? What are you in love with? <laughs> Good question. Maybe you should uh, take a little time off, relax, unwind. <laughs> you don't know Wall Street. I haven't been downtown in a couple of weeks. Come on, admit it. You're a workaholic. I guess I am. I allow myself five hours sleep a night, six on Sundays. Hmm. What about the men in your little black book? They must not like that. There are no men in my little black book. Back at my place, I found a couple of clean glasses and put them to use. I keep thinking about poor Andy. I can't imagine him killing Jordan. I mean, why would he? And his fall guy, whoever killed Jordan Kerr, either had a lot to lose or a lot to gain. Well, there's one thing I know. Whoever did it, you'll find him. Have you got any coffee around here? Oh, I'm sorry about the mess. The cleaning lady was late this week. You mean this year? <laughs> I, uh, I don't usually keep coffee. I I go to this joint around the corner, a pal of mine owns it, and I go there every morning, and uh, they got lots of coffee, they got donuts, and the uh, place never closes. I could go down there if you like. No, Mike. The coffee was for the morning. I need three cups to wake up. Strong. The stronger, the better. I'll grind the beans. My chat at Cheryl's office ended early the next morning as pillow talk. But the London market opened before my eyes did and Cheryl was already at her office working on her third coffee. She said she liked it strong, that was no surprise. But there was something about her that just didn't add up. Me, I take mine to go. So I left for my pal Lionel's who's always got something special in the pot. Hey Train, how's it going? Hey mate. What do we got? Uh, ultra mocha, vanilla almond cream, cappuccino, del whatever happened to regular coffee? You know, the kind in the can with the key on the bottom you can open? Oh, my friend, Mike, you don't want none of that poison. No, no, man. You want my special blend, like a gentle island breeze. Is it legal? This is my special blend for my special friends. Looks like dried salad. You sure this stuff is legal? No, no guns, no guns. Take anything you yeah. want.
Dream. Shoot out in a donut shop. Is Lila gonna make it? He's got a fighting chance. Still on a pulse when he hit the hospital. Robert Neva. You know the guy? Yeah, we played pool together and had lunch. You know, you wouldn't think a guy like Roper would have someone working for him who had a record a mile long, would you, Mike? But you heard, Skip? Wall Street's a jungle. He won't get far. Not with that arm you gave him. First, I have to get my hands around his throat. Let it go, Mike. Let my boys do their job, all right? Skip, this is personal. Forget it. We're going to play this one strictly by the book. Come on. Since when did you and I ever do anything by the book? And speaking of books. I know, I know. Payday's Friday. You know, Roper and his attorney are coming to my office at 4 today. We just happen to be in the neighborhood. It's a public building. You remember the public? Thanks, Skip. I'll be there. By the way, who do you like at the Vanderbilt game? No, no. I'm not betting this weekend. What's the mind? Skip gave me plenty to chew on. And frankly, with Andy in the slammer and Lionel in the hospital, this case was getting to me. Fortune magazine's got Anthony Ropa midway through the 100 richest men in town, and that's with a bullet. I know a secretary at Enright and Gibbons, and she knows somebody at Parker Consolidated. <clears throat> Anyway, the word is, Rope is either the smartest guy in town or the luckiest. He's got a knack for buying up companies, just as they're about to go through the roof. Oh, that's a nice knack. Anything else? A lot of people figure he made a deal with the devil. He must have had a hell of a night, Mike. Unforgettable. You can have those if you want. Mike, who's the girl? Knock it off. Now, what are we forgetting? We're forgetting something? The crime scene. What are we looking for? Oh, we got the gun. We got Andy, the security guard, those bonds. I want you to look for bond forgers on Wall Street. See if Anthony Rope is mixed up in any of it. Nobody's that lucky. You got it. Whose stock went up when Jordan Kerr went down? Was it Cheryl? Ropa? It certainly wasn't Andy. It was time for a little chat with Charles Walden. Broken up any good companies lately, Charlie? Mrs. Weathersby is at much. Let me ask you something. What did you have to do with Anthony Ropa's portfolio? Your point, please. My point is that Anthony Ropa couldn't think his way to the top of the Fortune 500. Not unless he got some special help from a smart guy like you, Harvard Grant. That is so outlandish. I don't know whether to laugh or call my attorney. Every time I call mine, he laughs. I'll tell you what else I think. I think that Jordan Kerr found out about your little shenanigans and threatened to blow the whistle. Or maybe he just wanted in. And naturally, you didn't want that. You didn't want to share the wealth. Now tell me, did Ropa help you do it? So you figured I killed him. Can I put you down for a confession? Mr. Hammer, I do know several good psychiatrists. They may be expensive, but you really do need the best. There is something you should know about me, Charlie. I'm very unstable when it comes to one thing, murder. I took Skip's tip and made sure I was at the 35th, where Ropa and his mouthpiece wouldn't expect me. Uh, Mr. Ropa, Mr. Benning, thank you very much. Appreciate you coming in. Mike, what are you doing here? Well, 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 you lift up the lid and look what's floating. My apologies, Mr. Ropa. No, I couldn't care less about Mike Hammer. Then why'd you send your goons out to put an extra hole in my donut? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about Robert Neva and his two dead bozos. If Robert Neva and you had an altercation, it was done without Mr. Ropa's knowledge or consent. Are you trying to tell me that a guy whose genetic makeup rivals that of an orangutan just decided to whack me on his own time? I fired Robert Neva right after that business at my club. I don't need a maverick on my payroll. 
Mr. Opa has termination notices and witnesses. Mr. Neva is no longer in his employ. Let's go. Wait a minute, Opa. Where is King Kong? Opa? Easy, Mike. Hey, Mike. Captain, I got that info you need. Good, let's have it. Here? Yeah. Right now? Yeah. It's uh, Mr. Frobo. <laughs> this I gotta hear. Go ahead, shoot. Okay. Um, he might be a slimy maggot, but uh, no offense. But he doesn't know anything about the bomb business. Anthony, we do not have to listen to insults from some rude delivery boy. I'll just sit on my boat and forget about these lowlifes. And this will all blow away. Two things, Mike. First, breath mints. <laughs> Second, well, the guy at the lab says the pictures of Kerr and his lady friend are genuine. No retouching. Well, I'm telling you something, Skip. Andy Havens did not take those pictures. He doesn't even know how to work a brownie. Well, I'm sorry, Mike, but he's still facing murder one. Oh, thanks. My breath wasn't the only thing that didn't smell right. Andy Havens was rotting in jail, as innocent as a puppy. About as dangerous as one, too. Andy? Andy? We gotta talk. Oh, no, no thanks. I already ate. What? Andy, it's me. It's Mike. We gotta talk. What happened to your hearing aid? They took it away. You're gonna have to shout. Okay, okay. Andy, tell me about the cash. What cash? The cash in your refrigerator. Yeah, you, you leave that where it is. That's my money. Come on, Andy. There was almost a quarter of a million dollars in there. You don't earn that kind of dough. You damn betcha I do. Near 50 years of cleaning, sweeping, <clears throat> taking care of people. I earned it. That belongs to me. That's my money. You'll leave it where it is. All right, don't worry about it. It's safe. The police are holding it for you. What? They took my money? You gave it to them? No. No, no, no. Just take it easy. Take it easy. I gotta get out. Calm down, Andy. Sit down. I gotta talk to you. Tell me about the photos in the fridge. What photos? I don't know nothing about no photos. You don't know anything about any photographs? No, I don't even have a camera. Does anybody else have a key to your apartment? Key? No, no, sir. Not even a super. You're absolutely sure? Uh, fine, but no anchovies. Andy Havens was a picture ready-made for framing. But who hung him on the wall? You can't teach an old dog new tricks. I was looking for a young dog. So I dropped by the office ready to roll up my sleeves. But Charles Walter rolled up instead. Charlie, where's your lawyer? Listen, whatever illegalities you think may have transpired in the relationship between Anthony Ropa and Jordan Curran Associates, you're wrong. Well, nobody's perfect. Five years ago, Mr. Ropa was working for a discount broker at a local. I hesitate to call it a firm. He was using capital from a trucking business he had recently liquidated in New Jersey. He wasn't doing terribly well until we met Mr. Kerr. Fall asleep. Get to the point. The association proved extremely profitable for both Mr. Ropa and our firm. You know what would be profitable for me? Explain to me what Jordan Kerr was doing with counterfeit bonds. Obviously, they belong to whoever killed him. So we're back to you, the bond expert. Please. Mr. Kerr may not have been my sort of man, but I did respect him. Are you trying to tell me that Anthony Roper had Jordan Kerr killed? That's not what I'm saying. I am a discreet man. Now, you're about as discreet as a hand grenade. Come on, you're trying to implicate Roper so you can take the heat off your own eyes. Don't try to sell me short, Charlie. No, you have this all wrong. Here, I brought you something. I thought you might need some nourishment after your difficult day. Twenty-two fifty for a cheeseburger? I'm not gonna eat it. I'm gonna put it in my will. You gotta believe me. I'm telling the truth. The truth is you didn't read the sign. Don't feed the bear. Mm -hmm. 
Andy Haven sat in prison, and I sat at my desk with a list of suspects, a headache, and nothing to go on. Yeah. It's Gleason. Yes, Gil. Bad news. The old man died. What? When? Last night in his sleep. Okay, thanks. Now I didn't even have a client. Poor Andy drew his final breath behind bars while a killer walked the streets a free man. That's when the phone rang again. It was Cheryl, and she had a story to tell. Mike, I'm so glad you're here. There's something I've been keeping from you. I know I should have told the police earlier, but I just couldn't. Now I've got to tell you. What is it? Charles has a problem. He beats his wife. She put up with it for a long time, but finally the police came. She backed down, didn't press charges. I was the only one Charles told. I, I know I should have fired him, but, but he was so brilliant, and he promised he'd change. Did Jordan Kerr know about this? He wasn't a forgive and forget kind of man. Charles knew that. And the threat of a scandal might scare away a lot of powerful people. That's the reason I left your apartment so early. I, I didn't think I could keep this secret any longer. But that isn't even the worst of it. Go on, tell me what. I, I was on my way out, and, and I passed a man heading toward Charles's office. He, he wasn't your typical kind of client or broker. He was, I, I don't know, some kind of a, a thug. He gave me the creeps. He had a briefcase, like the one that Andy had. And, and when he got to Charles' office, he, he handed him an envelope. Charles opened it, and there were photos inside. Mike, how could he have done it? How could he have done it? Everything Cheryl said screamed lie, but I didn't want to hear it. Maybe, just maybe, she was telling the truth. I had to know, and the only person I could ask was the man she had just accused of murder, Charles Walder. Thank God I was so blessed that I might have killed her. That was my bottom. I'd had some drinks with dinner. No, that's not right. I had some dinner with a lot of drinks. Nancy kept begging me to stop. Nancy has forgiven me. I haven't raised a hand to Nancy in five months, in 13 days, and I uh, pray I never will again. My name is uh, Mike Gage, and I'm a doubtaholic. Not here, not now. Charlie, what were you doing in your office the night Jordan Kerr was killed? I was here that night. Well, I know somebody who says differently. And somebody is lying, because I have 10 witnesses who swear that I was sitting in that chair from 9 o'clock until 12 midnight. Who saw Charlie at 10 o'clock on Monday night? I'm telling the truth, Hammer. OK, I, uh, I'm sorry. I was wrong. Well, maybe you would like to share. How many people have you beat in your life? Not enough. Just keep up the good work. While Charles Walder was working his 12 steps, I had made a misstep. I fell into Cheryl Weathersby's web of seduction. But now, she was going to be the one to take the fall. Mike. Say, sweetheart. I just had an interesting chat with Charles Walder. Oh, no. Are they going to arrest him? For what? Something you did? I, I don't understand. Come on, Cheryl. Don't play stupid with me. It's time for show and tell. Now, I must admit, that was a very interesting story, but it was all pure fiction. Mike, I don't think you know what you're saying. Anthony Roper may be smart, but nobody is that lucky. Somebody was giving him inside tips on the stock market, and it turned out that somebody was Jordan Kerr. You found out about this gravy train, you wanted on board, but maybe Kerr wasn't too happy about that. 
But we all know how persuasive you can be. And then something very interesting happened. Maybe Jordan Kerr got a twinge of conscience, or maybe he felt the feds closing in. Either way, he decided it was time to turn himself in, quit, turn state's evidence. Who knows, maybe he could get lucky and earn an 18-month stretch in a minimum security country club. And you just couldn't stand that, could you? So you whacked him. But then, old Andy came along, a gift from heaven. Whoever you got to shoot those photos and plant them in Andy's refrigerator was a real pro. And then you decided you needed some insurance, so maybe you'd better wrap me around your little finger. Maybe I made you nervous. In any event, you knew where you could find me the morning after. It turns out I was lucky. Lionel wasn't. As for Charles Walter, he couldn't have been here the night of the murder. He was having a group therapy session. And that story about the thug who gave you the creeps, that was about as real as the fake bonds you planted in Andy's briefcase. I told you where I was and what I was doing. Yeah, making a big trade at Indonesia. And that's where you made your biggest mistake. You should read more than the business news. It just so happens the day Jordan Kerr was murdered, there was an earthquake at Indonesia. The stock market was shut down for five hours. So much for your alibi. That log you printed for the cops, that's gonna turn out to be an interesting piece of evidence. What of it? You can't prove anything. Oh, I'm sure Captain Gleason can put this case together very nicely. Pack your toothbrush, sweetheart. You're going to the big house. Right there, Hammer. And I'd love it if you'd make a sudden move. I was just thinking about you, Robbo. How's the arm? Honey, pack your bags. Our plane leaves in an hour. You're pretty good, Mike. You had me going for a minute. That's 30 seconds more than he'd give you. No. Not yet. She's right. Two murders in one office might not look good in the Wall Street Journal. You could lose clientele. Move it. Real slow. With a gun in my back and a coffin in my future, this was no time for subtlety. I had to put my foot down. You wouldn't happen to know the closing down, would you, Robert? Hammer shut. I just saved your life, Mike. That's funny. I don't see it that way. I can still make life very pleasurable. Sorry, sweetheart. I don't buy it. You're gonna take the fall. I've got millions put away in Switzerland. Let's get on that plane, the two of us. We can have a wonderful life, Mike. We can do anything. Mike. You can't turn me in. You can't. Mike, I love you. The only thing you love is power and money. Your stock market just crashed. I'd had my fill of Cheryl's lies, but the next morning I still woke up hungry. Hungry for the man who got away. I didn't bother with reservations. I knew I'd find him at our regular table. That's right. Tell him to buy. How's the job, Mr. Roper? That's okay. I thought I'd seen the last of you, Hammer. Well, I got a tip on a hot stock. <laughs> you? Don't make me laugh. Don't worry, I'm not in a humorous mood. And neither is the SEC. Cheryl Weathersby just laid out a murder confession for Jordan Kerr, and while she was at it, she laid out a whole story of insider trading. Very interesting. She had names, dates, recorded tape conversations. It's not gonna take her off the hook, but it might save her from death row. And you know, one name kept coming up over and over again. Yours. You bastard. Don't bother clearing the table. They're here for takeout. Anthony Roper thought he was a big fish in a big pond. The fact is, he was nothing but a shrimp.
Andy Haven spent his life cleaning up after other people, people who thought they were better than him, if they thought of Andy at all. But when it comes time for the final accounting, all the Wall Street big shots combined couldn't ring Andy's mop. You know, some of these bills date all the way back to the 30s. Mm. Probably worth more as collector's items than they are at face value. Yeah, the kids at St. Albans will sure be happy. The Catholic charter school? Mm-hmm. Nice guy. Yeah, and he left him every penny. Hmm. Should buy a lot of books. Huh? Speaking of books, uh, if this were yours, you could just about cover your losses. <laughs> Very funny. By the way, I did Vanderbilt do. They won? No. When you know it. Um, I got some more good news. I called the hospital. Lionel's gonna make it. Great. Oh, by the way, I meant to ask you, what was Cheryl Weathersby so upset about earthquakes in Indonesia? I mean, they even have earthquakes in Indonesia? Damn if I knew. The lure of the fast buck, the big payday, has wrecked many lives and brought more than a few to a violent end. Such was Jordan Kerr's fate. Forget Vegas and Atlantic City, Wall Street is the ultimate casino. As for me, I prefer my action at the track or the ballpark, someplace littered with laughter, not ticker tape and broken dreams. What the hell are pork bellies anyway?